G'day, Jeff Lewis here from Seriously Series, and welcome to, I guess, another update video. Um, this is probably, I'm hoping to be the start of a lot of really good video, videos and informative reviews and a lot more coming to you in 2024. And I just want to sort of explain to you a little bit why, uh, particularly myself, uh, I've been a bit absent from YouTube over the uh, coming months, just to give you a bit of insight and also to give you a little bit of uh, anticipation as to what's coming your way both here and uh, beyond also. So if this sounds like a video that might be of interest to you, then as always you know exactly what to do. Click on that subscribe button down below, click on that notification button too, but most importantly, stay tuned. Uh, so I just want to take the time to do this quick update video. Um, I think it's just good to let you all know what's been happening here, uh, what we've got planned and what we're intending to do, uh, not just for 2024, but we're looking further ahead uh, to 2025. And I'll sort of touch on a little bit as to why we've sort of adopted that um, uh, methodology. Let's put it that way. So 2024 was... Uh, 2024 is going to be a big year. 2023 was uh, a big year. We had two uh, big adventures. We had Trek to the Coast and Across the Nullarbor, which uh, Trek to the Coast saw us cross, uh, and by we, I mean uh, Nathan, Murray and myself, uh, cross the Great Victorian Desert from north to south. Uh, it also then saw us head off uh, across the Nullarbor, which Murray joined us again, uh, along with Mike, and we travelled right across the Nullarbor to get to the Adelaide Four Wheel Drive Adventure Show. We then drove back uh, to Mike and Murray. Murray drove back to Perth. Mike flew back to Perth. I drove back to Kalgoorlie here, spent a couple of days, and then literally back on the road to get down to Perth to do the uh, Perth Four Wheel Drive Show. So it was a big, big end to the year. And last year was, uh, as much as it doesn't sound, a bit of a slower year. Um, as I said in uh, previous update videos, I had a bit of a, a bad bout of, uh, I guess they're calling it sort of post-COVID um, ailments. And that, that really sort of knocked me for six. And that's why there wasn't a lot of uh, videos coming out last year. Uh, but I'm hoping we can sort of uh, change that for this year because there's lots of good stuff for us to go out and actually have a look at. And lots of subjects to discuss, lots of products to review, lots of tech top tips and obviously servicing your 4x4 too. So there's going to be plenty coming your way. Now as for trips and adventures, uh, Damon and I have sort of sat down and really had to sort of um, do a little bit of thinking. It's usually not too hard for myself to come up with an adventure. Um, even going to the supermarket can be a bit of an adventure at times if you own a proper adventurous off-road vehicle. But uh, we've come up with about five, I believe, five adventures that we're going to look at pursuing. And I say pursue because it's all well and good looking at a map, coming up with an idea, but it's a completely different kettle of fish to actually making it actually happen. So that's the big step from theory to practice, like with anything. So we've locked in as of today, as I'm filming this video, uh, the dates for our Tasmania trip that we're going to do. As many of you know, we've got a series called Edge of the Earth, which we've sort of picked up on and off uh, over the years. And we're hoping to do a three to four part extension of that series, uh, which we're calling Forgotten Tracks. And we're actually going to travel 
across pretty much half the length of Australia, uh, Tasmania, uh, from the land of the giants or the Styx Valley, all the way down to the southernmost point uh, of the Australian, I guess, continent, you could say, even though Tasmania is a little bit of a breakaway of the continent, but certainly the southernmost municipality and town, which is Cockle Creek. So that's going to be a really, really good trip to do, and we're hoping to do that in late May. Um, we've then, or I've then, got a trip planned hopefully around about August for two weeks, which will see myself and maybe a couple others head off uh, east of the Canning Stock Crew. And this is going to be interesting because where I'm going to go with this trip, um, there won't be any marked tracks. Uh, there have been tracks out there, but the tracks which I'm intending to use uh, probably haven't been used for maybe 50, 60, 70 years or more. And what I'm hoping to do is actually go out and look at the rock holes and the soaks of the area. And a lot of these were picked up by a fellow by the name of Peter Murr, and I may have pronounced that wrong, I do apologise if I have. And he was a, a dogger who worked for the APB, and the APB is the Agricultural Protection Board, or at least it used to be. And his job was to patrol the rabbit-proof fence. And this was back in the, I think, late 50s, mid-60s. And so he went into a lot of parts where no white fella uh, had ever been before and actually found some pretty remarkable things out there, which he's documented in a fantastic book called, um, I think it's Blue, Blue Ridges, Blue Ridges and something else. I'll try and mention it in a further video, which I'm sure I will in the future. So that that is a really interesting read, and he's incredibly descriptive in his notes, and he actually maps, uh, maps and plots actually where these rock holes are. And this ties in with another particular theory that I'm just sort of throwing around at the moment, and this is the fact of Harold, Harold Bell Lassiter. Now, many of you might know the Lassiter tale, a fellow that went out into the desert claiming that there was a giant gold reef out on the, supposedly out on the Northern Territory, Western Australian border, uh, west of the Olgas and west of uh, Uluru or Ayers Rock. Uh, but anyway, supposedly he got lost and no one ever found him again. But there is a theory that that's not the case. In fact, he escaped and he escaped all the way to the gold fields of Western Australia in the height of summer in 1931. And this fella supposedly had no bushcraft, bushman experience at all. He was very inexperienced. So I find that quite hard to believe that someone would be able to do that. And upon getting to the gold fields, it gets even better. He then got to Perth, got on a ship and made his way to America spent the rest of his days there supposedly. So it's an interesting theory. I don't know if it actually holds water. Probably not. But I think it's interesting just to see would it be actually possible for someone to be able to travel that distance in the height of summer um, by relying on those rock holes. You know, how far are they actually apart? How big are they? Are they a rock hole or are they a soak? because soaks and rock holes are completely different things and they function in completely different ways and can hold um, water for different periods of time and, and different volumes too. So that's going to be really interesting. And then another trip that we're sort of in the early stages of planning is looking at doing New Zealand in 2025. Uh, I've had the joy of being able to get in touch via email uh, by a fellow adventurer, Hayden Jones. Uh, who produces some wonderful Land Rover adventures about his home in New Zealand and the wonderful tracks that you can find there. Uh, so I'm really quite excited, and so is Damon too, to actually get over into that part of the world and actually um, just explore it. And it's such a picturesque part of this world. And so few people... Um, apart from Hayden and a few others, uh, have actually filmed and documented uh, many of these tracks uh, on television, on online streaming services and more. So it's, uh, yeah, it's going to be a great opportunity. 
and then we've pushed back by 12 months our um, second attempt at doing the Canning Stock Group, the working title that we're calling Road to Ruin Part 2. Uh, the reason why is that trip for us is the big one. Um, you know, 2025 will mark 10 years of Seriously Series, um, and that's going to be a pretty big celebration to do that trip, uh, but also to complete it. And I don't want to rush this vehicle, nor do I want to rush the Parenti. Uh, I want to make sure they're absolutely A grade and everything's smick on them. You know, no leaks, just the old whip. That's all we want with the oil. So, and yeah, so we want that to be everything to be spot on. Sorry, just thinking off the top of my head here, guys and girls. We want everything to be spot on there. We want to know that we've got uh, enough funds to be able to do it comfortably in terms of paying for fuel and food and that kind of stuff. Um, we want to make sure that we've got the right sponsors on board, that we've got the right people on board for the trip and it's going to work well for them. So giving plenty of notice works well for that. Um, we want to do it in the cooler months, so we're probably looking at July, August, um, which is safer. Um, going out there in the hotter times of year, you know, even getting into you know late September, which we ended up doing last time, it just gets too hot and it puts too much strain on yourself and the vehicles too, because uh, it can easily that time of year it can reach you know the mid mid to high 40s, you know, not a problem at all. So. That's what we want to do. We want to give ourselves plenty of time to do it. We're going to allow a month to do it. Most people allocate two weeks. Um, we will need to do a week of travel, um, probably to not only to get to Aluna from Kalgoorlie, which will take a day, but it will take us probably four or five days to get back. We want a couple of days to rest and obviously go over the vehicles before we do the, I think it's two and a half thousand kilometres to drive back from Halls Creek via Broome and, and back down to Kalgoorlie. So it's, it's a long drive, even longer if you live in Perth or anywhere else for that matter. So, yeah, so we, we want to make sure that's okay. Um, as I said, you know, most people it takes them two weeks to do it. We want to allocate a month also, so we've got three weeks on the actual track. <clears throat> then if we hit any problems, uh, you know, things breaking, axle snapping, parts going wrong, we can call um, the respective parts um, companies that we'll be dealing with, with the likes of KLR um, or Goldfields Off-Road, and we can get those parts shipped in and flown in to Newman which is a large mining town for iron ore, and that's probably at the closest regional centre that we're going to get towards, unless you're at the northern end up, northern end up towards Halls Creek, where uh, Kununurra would be um, our closest port of call. But even then, from Halls Creek to Kununurra, I think that's about four or five hour drive, so it's, it's still a long, a long way from anywhere. But that's, that's the appeal, that's the appeal. So that's sort of what we're working on trip-wise. Editing-wise, we've got Trek to the Coast and Across the Nullarbor, which I've just finished doing all the photographs um, for all our sponsors, which we do media packages for. Um, I've now got to go through and do all the um, commercials. Uh, I now have to go through and do all the social media and media stuff uh, associated with that. And then we need to do a rough cut of the actual both series too uh, and then we've also got I'm working on that Damon is doing the final cut on uh, Dust and Dreams which is our feature documentary film which will come out hopefully in cinemas sometime this year uh, and then Road to Ruin is finally in its very 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 hopefully final stage of being done and I keep saying it'll be done in a month it'll be done in a month but we keep hitting roadblocks with this aggregator uh, company, but I think most of the roadblocks we've either hit or we've overcome. So that will be coming out too. And then we're working closely with uh, Classic Land Rover magazine uh, to bring out some more sort of how-to articles uh, within that also. And obviously uh, translating or 
making a sort of a more of a publication version of all of these trips that we've done and more and are intending to do too, along with other magazine publications along the way too, like Western Four Wheel Driver magazine, which I've just completed uh, all of the Bush Mechanic columns for uh, 2024. So no time to be bored, guys and girls. But look, uh, I'll leave it there. I've taken up enough of your time, but now you know what's going on. And uh, I do apologise, as I said, you know, we, we haven't done a huge amount on YouTube for the start of this year. Um, and the reason being is I've just wanted to hold off. Um, I've wanted to get all this other stuff sorted out, stop, film some what I believe to be quite good videos, videos that I think you'll all enjoy, and then build up a, a backlog as we usually do of videos and then we can just hit the ball uh, hit so, so hit the ground running I've got verbal dyslexia today I apologize hit the ground running and then we're off again it's business as usual but look thank you all so much for sticking by us uh, thank you very much for all of those who have subscribed to the channel you click that notification button so you know when these videos are coming out but a big special thank you, not only to our sponsors, because they do make a big difference, uh, but the biggest sponsor and the biggest help of all is our Patreons. Uh, joining us on their Helping Seriously series on there is really making a big, big difference. And particularly with our uh, smaller productions, it's allowing us to be able to cover costs. And as I keep saying, the more support we get, the easier it is to cover the costs, the more time that we can then allocate to do these adventures, make these videos, present to you and bring to you the informative content that you want to see that is so hard to find out there on the likes of YouTube and television and the rest of these days, we can continue to do that and give you more. So that's what Patreon's all about. It doesn't cost you an arm and a leg. It's not going to take away your Friday beer money, don't you worry about that, it's not going to send you broke. So check it out, click on the Patreon icon at the top right hand corner of your screen if you haven't done so already, if you have and you are supporting us, thank you very much, and I've got some Land Rovers to fix, so I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks again and see you then.